Good morning, everybody. For those of you who are either uh, within the Eastern Standard Time Zone or uh, further west in Canada, for those of you attending uh, further east in Canada, uh, welcome you to uh, af the afternoon. Um, if you're attending the information seminar regarding Power BI, you've come to the right place. So we're going to be looking at seven essential reasons to use Power BI for analytics and dynamic CRM in the cloud. Just a little bit about who we are and what we do before we get started. So uh, who we are is ePerformance Inc. And specifically, all the webinars that get brought to you are brought to you by the Training Academy. Essentially, we're an e-government solutions company. We specialize in public sector software solutions and tools since 1999. And we particularly have invested ourselves quite heavily uh, in the XRM accelerators uh, industry within Microsoft. So we do it, what we say, what we mean when we say XRM is essentially sub in X for the type of relationship management that you want to do. So for those of you familiar with customer or client relationship management, what Dynamics does and what Microsoft, the entire Microsoft stack does quite well, is it gives you ability to enhance this tool to do a lot more other things. So we find ourselves doing work within a number of different industries and verticals, including contact management, grants management, case management, customer or client relationship management, loans management, insurance management, and then there are a number of one-off and, let's say, custom solutions that we've done for a number uh, of individuals and organizations. We do provide training and hosting services, uh, much like the, let's say, ad hoc training events that you may have experienced at your own organizations, uh, as well as regularly scheduled courses, and we do provide help desk support. Suffice to say, from end to end, we can help you dream up a solution, we can help you build it, and we can even help you support it and train on it and host it at the end of the day. We were just recently um, elected by the CIO Review as one of the top 50 firms in North America for CRM. So essentially our focus, where we fit in this, is a niche where we're dedicated to the needs of the public sector. It's far cry different from the private sector. The duration and time, the sensitivity of language and terminology all have a different tone um, and let's say that needs to be applied to it. And that's where we like to uh, see ourselves. The person presenting to you today is myself, Devin Murphy, so I'm the tr Manager of Training and Consulting at ePerformance uh, Inc. And I'll be walking you uh, through the seven essential reasons why you'd want to be looking at Power BI within the public sector. So a little overview of the presentation that we're going to be going through. We're going to review Power BI as an analytics tool for micro the Microsoft Stack and Dynamic CRM. So although there are a number of other stacks that you could look at and technologies that would make sense, um, our focus is hinging off of things that are related to Microsoft and Microsoft Dynamics CRM or things that would work with these tools. So we've branched out a little bit, but certainly um, this would not be an all-encompassing, all BI tools, um, things that are available out there in the market today. And we'll explain why, where that rationale comes from and why we've applied that. If we look at our agenda, we're going to start with an introduction of what BI is, what Power BI is. After that, we're going to look at the reason why you're here, the seven essential reasons for Power BI, and take a look at a couple short demos of the tool, um, you know, supporting those examples. And at the end, we'll look at a wrap-up and key points. So this is an introduction. What is Power BI? Well, before we talk about Power BI, we do need to start with what is BI to begin with. BI stands for Business Intelligence. And if I want to just borrow from some recent literature, uh, it's looked at as a set of techniques and tools to the acquisition and transformation of raw data into meaningful and useful information for business analysis purposes. So it's much more than just looking at data. It's how you get the data. It's the tools that you have. It's if there's a methodology that you might em employ to get that information. These are all very key things that apply to business intelligence. So suffice to say, it's reporting, but more. So a lot of people, when, I, when they come to me and ask me about, well, what is this BI tool? So just another report uh, writing tool? Well, it's a little bit more than that. It gives you some predictive uh, modeling uh, techniques. It gives you some tools to do that. It gives you the ability to create calculations uh, over time or in an instant. And it basically lends itself to analytical methodologies that you might use for trending your data over time. So uh, this was the big 
push, let's say, from Cognos um, or, and Oracle uh, founders of BI is the idea that it didn't matter that you could report on what's going on at a point in time is that at all those point in times and considering what the story of your data was so that it was real information over time. Right? And it also includes a collection of data. So now let's take a look at Power BI. What do we mean by that? Well, Power BI is reporting in a BI software from Microsoft. And in fact, if you look at a lot of literature that analyzes what is BI and comparing BI products, a lot of the time, instead of just talking about one tool or solution, they'll often talk about a company and its BI offering. And the reason why that is is because, once again, if we think about BI in a broader concept, it's doing a lot of things. So when we look at an example of what is Power BI or an example of that? It's not just the end result, which is this chart or report here. It's how you get the data. And a lot of the essentials that we want to talk about are all around how you get that data, where that data comes from, what you do with that data, how you combine different types of data, et cetera. So, for example, you know, geomapping, which we're looking at as an example on the right-hand side here, is coming from the geocodes uh, that have been put into the system and how you get that and where you're extracting that from can be from directly from Bing or it could be from your database. So there's two different ways that you can kind of geographically map your data out. Also, if you're comparing two different data sets that are completely, let's say, unrelated, but you want to draw a correlation between them, there's ways to do that as well. So you can have kind of correlative models, which help you make inferences about what something is doing in your business or what something is doing between two different systems if we want to be more purist about the way that we talk about our calculations and analytics. So it's available online or for desktop, so you can go into your browser and access this. It's worth saying, as well as it being available online, it would be available online through your mobile device as well. And finally, it allows you to do analyses of data from multiple different sources. And this is going to come become probably the hub of a lot of the different discussions that we're going to have as we go through the different reasons. So at this point, now knowing what Power BI is and what BI is in general, it gives us a foundation to have a broader discussion on why would we want to use Power BI. The reason number one, ease of use. So if you attended our previous webinar on Power BI, we would have walked you through a much more in-depth look at what we're about to explain, and uh, I would direct you either to follow up with me after the fact or anyone from our organization to hear more about this. But let's talk about the shortened version of that story. So let's start with the challenges. Why would you bother with any type of BI? Well, there are a lot of challenges with reporting and analytics right now. If you're looking at reporting and analytics in organizations, there's a bottleneck. Usually there's only a limited people who can do them. There's a limited amount of access that you can grant to that data so that people could actually get the report on it. And over and above that, this skill set or the technologies that you have available to you have their own set of nuance or things that will make reports available or able to be reported on, et cetera. So you have this bottleneck that comes from all these kind of different reasons. Analytical tools can often take too uh, long to implement. So cataloging is a great example of where you want to take a pile of data that might not make any sense to a report writer and then put in, let's say, enforce a logical model on your data, right? So now, instead of having six tables which all link, you know, contacts to a company somewhere in the background, I'm going to just say that if I'm an individual, Devin Murphy, and I work for ePerformance, I'm going to have a look up on my contact record. So I might look up on Devin Murphy that says he works for this company and that company is ePerformance. That's an example of a logical model, which the physical data underlying that may be a lot more complex. However, analytical tools have a way of, let's say, cutting through that confusing um, linking and relationships so that you can report on it intuitively. As we touched on already, there's a high skill set often required just to write the report. So you want to try and find ways around how to write these reports. Certainly, if you go back 10 years, you had to have a good handle on how to write any kind of SQL query. Depending on the technology you're using, you might have to know how to write SQL in three different uh, technology stacks. So it was Oracle, MySQL, and uh, maybe SQL Server, right? So definitely, um, you know, a lot of nuance associated with trying to get real data out of the data housing that you have. And then, of course, a thorough understanding of the data is required. Even to create that, uh, 
catalog that we were talking about before, you still need to have a thorough understanding of all the catalogs that would talk to each other. So these are very important concepts or things that you need to have a perspective of. So where we came to in our previous webinar is we took a look at the level of complexity um, versus the volume of ease of use. So we put together four quadrants. We use this. This isn't comprehensive. This is illustrative so that we can have an idea of how things would get put together. So if you look at the quadrants plotted by ease of use versus complex analytics, and if you want the literature on how we uh, derive this as a meta-analysis from different studies, feel free to follow up with me afterwards. The idea, though, is between these four quadrants, in the top right, you'd have an ideal solution and you'd have an undesirable solution. Now, being completely honest, this analysis did suit very well for looking at the .NET stack and the tools associated with that. So once again, this is not a comprehensive analysis of all BI tools out there. However, we did figure out a way that logically made sense to exclude ones that wouldn't fit in this context. So for example, we looked at a lot of common reporting tools, but some just got excluded in this analysis because, well, for one, they didn't interoperate very well with maybe SQL Server or a suite of uh, tools. We removed tools that required online access from the US. So because a lot of our uh, audience comes from Canada and it's subject to the, anything, any data that would be subject to the Patriot Act, for example, comes off the table immediately. So we can't have that access. And then additionally, you might have scenarios where um, you don't have any kind of interoperability with dynamics. So because we won't have that kind of connectivity, we wanted tools that are a little bit more broad in capture. And these are the ones that essentially uh, landed here. So certainly, depending on how you uh, categorize and weight your data, you might find slightly different results. But the major thing that we come out of those quadrants, if you recall, volume or ease of use versus complex analytics, things essentially and most importantly fall into one of these four quadrants. Whether how far it goes or not completely would depend on the way that you weighted um, your, your study. But the key points were that on the left-hand side, you have something that are developer tools, right? So essentially, you have to know how to write code in order to be able to use these tools flat out. And then on the right-hand side, you have non-developer tools. So what's key about Power BI is you don't really need to know a thing about development. You don't need to really know a thing about report writing. You really just have to know your terminology within your organization. And even at that, you may not even need to know the terminology within your organization to put together useful uh, data. Of course, where Dynamics finds itself is, is although it's incredibly easy to use, you can't do very complex analytics with it, um, or you'd be stretching it to be able to do something like that. Uh, SharePoint, it's in a similar way, but it might be more difficult to use. So depending on how sophisticated you are, the illustrative part of this was that, well, if you know how to code, then you're fitting into the developer tools, and if you remove the code from the equation, if it's a possibility, this is roughly where things would fit. So it was very advantageous from an ease of use. And the reason why Power BI came up, the key factors that contributed to it sitting in this ease of use category was that there was no developer skills required. So you don't need to know how to develop. Had a drag and drop interface, which has now become standard for a lot of designers of any sort, but particularly for Power BI if you're trying to link tables or you're trying to associate uh, one set of data to another. It also suggests and provides default charts and components. So you, if you pick two di different types of data, Power BI is going to assume how you might put that together, and it might work for you. And you can change it to kind of default or change or suggest how you should put together data as you compile these different combinations. It also interprets plain language, and we'll see what we mean by that a little bit later, uh, is, is it's really adding itself to another essential reason why you want the tool. It does dynamic filtering, so we'll take a look at what that does. But more or less, if you have something and you want your entire data on your dashboard to filter based on your selection or your drill down, it's going to be able to do that for you on the fly. So very, very tight relationships, very tight um, results, and it, it does a lot of things for you as a result of doing that. So at the end of the day, we're saying again, no developer skills required, key. So reason number two, there's no limits. So let's explain what do we mean by no limits when we say that Power BI has no limits. Well. There's no query limit. So 
So the data that you're getting, so if, if you've looked at a lot of the BI tools out there, particularly a lot of the best of breed ones, a number of them actually have an upper limit of records that you can query, whether it's by time frame, whether it's by um, what you can put into the table that you're going to analyze. And Power BI doesn't have one simply. It uh, did in previous versions and it's been removed. The number of views or tables that you can have are set to a limit of 2,000 per instance. So if you have a scenario where you're doing more than this for just analytics, um, I've yet to see a catalog that's over 2,000 records long. I'm sure they exist out there, but you know this would be a scope where you might need to make a decision about having a secondary instance of Power BI or something like that. The databases can exceed 10 gigabytes per user. So a lot of people will come to me and say, well, Devin, what, what's this 10 gigabyte um, limit that I see when I'm looking at uh, licensing online. Well, what that does is that's explaining to you that if you want data to be housed in the cloud for your Power BI, the limit is 10 gigs for the size of whatever the files are per user that you have. So first off, it's per user. So if you had unlimited users, you have unlimited space. It's really just like a file folder online saying that you have a certain space. The second you go on premise, that's no longer a limitation that you have. Also, depending on how you house your data, you can stream your data. So if you stream your data, you can do up to 1 million rows per hour and stream that into your, your database. And if you're doing it on-premise or live data sources, there's no such thing as a limit. You're just visualizing that data and analyzing it and using the analytical capabilities that this data has to merge different sources and put them in a way that's going to put that information together. So there's no limit, or there's no query limit. It's quite key, right? Um, and the way that you're going to look at that information over a number of different ways is quite broad. Furthermore, at dashboards and reports, you can make as many as you like. Really, when you're looking at dashboards and reports, once again, if you're online, you're looking at size limits, right, according to your licensing. But if you're, you can store a Power BI file in your SharePoint, you can store it locally on your computer, and anyone can open it from any of those different sources. So it's really as many as you can possibly make, uh, and Envision is how many you're going to put together. Please note that views and tables are not what we're seeing in this example. These are charts or representations, so there virtually is no limitation on how you do that. The underlying views and tables are where you get that 2,000 limit. So it's very, very broad, right? So you analyze the data the way, the data the way you want it, and how you want it. One of the other really fundamental reasons for wanting Power BI is it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Now, is it free all the time? Well, let's talk about that. There's a couple of points to know about this. For any database that you want to house online, so remember that 10 gig limit that we talked about. Well, if you want to stick data like spreadsheets and the like online into your online implementation of Power BI, under one gig, there's no cost. So the second you hit under that threshold, you're really not looking at a limitation. So if you want to try this today after this uh, presentation, by all means, go ahead and download it. They'll let you set it up, uh, get it going for free. And what you'll probably find is just to learn how to use the tool and see what you can kind of do, I recommend grab a spreadsheet, grab your existing SQL Server or something to that effect, and try and run some queries or um, some analytics on it just the way that I'll be doing in the uh, demo demoable parts of this presentation. It allows you to do that. Other things are, and I would encourage you to look into this, is depending on how you purchase Dynamics online, if you have already, or if you've purchased Dynamics CRM 2016, or if you've even purchased uh, Office 365 Enterprise, technically, or in, mo in many cases where you see Enterprise and the package name for um, your solution or your Microsoft product, that almost always includes Power BI now, the professional edition. So those things where you had to pay licensing, it's actually just included with something else you'd be getting anyway for different, probably different reasons. So I encourage you to look at what you do have. If you have questions about that, uh, I'd be happy to answer any of them. Or in the worst case, uh, defer you to somebody within Microsoft who could you know, ensure you're getting the right licensing. But essentially, even to get the more professional version, you can get it for free. And there's also so there's free online and on-premise uh, versions available, depending on how you approach it and how you put together these different packages. So, I mean, go ahead and try it out and see if what I did in this presentation, for example, is really uh, meeting your expectations for you as a user. So reason number four is you can ask this system questions. So this is probably not something 
when you think of a BI tool or a report writing tool uh, from an old school designer perspective, you're trying to answer a question as the entire, entirety of your design. How you put things together is the reason why you're approaching a report in the first place. I like to think of Power BI as playing 20 questions on steroids. So essentially, suppose we have a system that does a, manages a contract solution. What Power BI will allow you to do is ask it questions about your data and it'll provide you answers. So for example, how many contracts do I have? Or how many con what are the contract amounts that are being managed by year? Or what are the contract amounts by vendor? So here we enter in the first tipping point where we go from the deck that I've been showing you to looking at Power BI as an actual solution. So let's have a peek at that. So first off, here's an example of Power BI online uh, that's looking at a variety of different data. And you can have it maxed out to your full screen like I've done here. And of course, you can look at a number of different solutions and reports. So of course, here what I'm looking at are a number of dashboards and reports that I've built uh, over time. And the example that I want to have a look at is the contracts dashboard. And this is a dashboard that looks at my contracts information, of which is compiling a database. It's compiling uh, an Excel file. And it's kind of rationalizing this all into one place. And what I can do is ask it questions. So if we think back to the kind of questions that we had, we can ask it, how many contracts do I have? So if we want to just put in something very simple like this, notice how as I put in these words, it's already trying to rationalize a number of things from different tables. So here we have a contract file table through my procurement logs. We have uh, procurement item logs, date, time. It's trying to rationalize what am I asking for as I put in the question. I go back here. So what I actually want to see is, so I don't really need to know very much about this data to kind of figure out what I need an answer for. I could say something like contract file now because I can see that my vocabulary is increasing based on the information that's being provided to me. And what you see here is as you put that in that information and select a result here, contract file, it gives you a count of the number of contract files that I would have in the system. Suppose that wasn't enough. Suppose I wanted to know a little bit more. So this is just a very simple tile of basic information. But what if I want to know and I'll just take a few moments here. Count contracts. By vendor. By simply putting in a question like this, and I can, you can see it's underlined, it's not sure it has it quite right, so I can say contract file number here. And if I specify for here, vendor name. And so we'll just reverse this, we'll go contract file by vendor name. And what you can see here is relatively quickly, I can kind of get an idea of all the different vendors I have and the number of contracts that I have. So in this case, I just said count the number of here. And then previous, I said how many. So you can see how the different languages kind of enable you to kind of look at these things. And then furthermore, I could also say how much. So this might be the final question that I want to take a look at is, Let's say, what's my contract? And uh, forgive me, guys, my keyboard is not responding very quickly here. We say contract. Amount. I'm 
you can see how automatically this is putting the information together as I type this in. I'm having a bit of a delay here, but it will put it together, contract amount by vendor name. So there we go. So just by typing in simple questions into this tool, we can get a lot of information out of the system. And I don't really have to know a lot about the system. And even if I don't know the terminology, to that extent, it will suggest things that make sense. So it does a lot of synonym searching based on the natural language that I put together. So these are good examples of how you can ask it or play 20 questions about your data and sort it out. And the sort of thing you'll end up with at the end of the day are much more complex uh, dashboards like this one, which are basically the sum of a number of different questions like this, or they could be, and then you can tailor it further after the fact. So here we see a list of where you might put total amount of contract files, total amounts, this is on slightly different data, and total number of vendor names, and they get a more complex set of analysis. Coming back to a previous point that we had where we said there's a filtering criteria that's available, if I pick one of the clients here, for example, automatically all of the dates, all of the charts, and all the information associated with that gets filtered. So we can see very quickly how this tool not only will it put together a series of logical reports that rationalize my data in a way that I can make sense of it, it also allows me to filter and drill down on this information relatively quickly. And of course, I can do that to the nth degree, um, but here's the case in point. So reason number five is you don't need SQL or enhanced uh, access to get to the data or to manage the data. And I've just kind of listed it off really briefly here, but it's to stress the point that you can get it into Excel, Dynamic SharePoint, if you can get it into SQL or SQL Analysis Services, if you can get it through OData or ODBC, the short answer is you can report on it. And particularly where you get a lot of access is from the different SQL sources, from SharePoint, OData, and ODBC. This is where you can get into the realm of Redshift uh, or completely different data sources which have nothing to do with the Microsoft stack. And this is where this tool starts to be quite good. And some of the sources that you merge can be very um, predictive uh, and very correlative because you're taking completely different sources, which sometimes may have results that make sense and sometimes won't. So great place to access your data. And particularly for those of you who are in the public sector, um, one of the biggest hurdles for getting access to your data is that you don't have access to SQL Server or you don't have access to the Cognos tool or the Impromptu tool or, or what have you or the SAP BI tools or the Oracle uh, and I could go on. But they always require some different echelon or some different zone that you have to go in to get this information. If you can get your data into any one of these sources then you no longer have to go through that extended uh, let's say set of security requirements. Um, although, of course, setting it up in the first place might require some IT assistance, right, because it may not be intuitive. So these are the types of things that you have to take a look into, but you're not setting up an entire different um, set of privileges for your AD accounts to get access to the information. If you can see this data somewhere because you have a role to see it in one of these different systems, you have access to kind of crunch that data and work with it within Power BI. So over and above the fact that we can interoperate with a number of things, you can read data for almost anything. And this really goes beyond just reading databases at this point. It goes beyond reading an Excel spreadsheet. You really have the ability to take a look at all kinds of different data, right? So definitely OData and ODBC give you a lot of access that you may not have thought of before. One of the cool examples that I like, uh, this was done by a, a fellow named uh, Sam Lester. And what he did was, he took his information from a web page, from all the posts that he's doing on Power BI, for example. So here's some information. He's just reading a website. He's not reading uh, anything unique. So we could do the same on our website, for example. And what he did was he read that and fed it into Power BI. And then he put an iframe of that information and posted it to the web. So all of your Power BI reports can be posted to the web. So what he did was take the results from the tables on your website and put them on your website. So this is actually a Power BI 
thing. So if you want the reference to this or the link to it, if you look up Sam Lester, you'll find it pretty quickly. Um, but if you're looking for exact examples or how you might implement this, feel free to follow up with me, with me afterwards. Uh, it's certainly a good way to get some number crunching on your system without having to implement any tool whatsoever. You just use this tool to crunch analytics from your web results and it'll read the tables right off your website. Another example is you can monitor Bing searches. So suppose you wanted to know what's going on with Trudeau in the news, you wanted to know what the activity was on Bing, um, see what that looks like geographically. This is the sort of thing you can stick into uh, Power BI relatively easily. And this is an example of a pile of different widgets that you can get, but let's have a quick peek at what that looks like. So what I can do is say get data here. You can say services, and there's a number of services that I could look at, but in this case, or the example that I want to look at, is I want to look at Bing searches and just the history of Bing. And of course, I'm not going to go into heavy detail how I do this, but just to stress how simple it is, if I say get on Bing here. Now, you'll get much more sophisticated over time with how you might gather this data as a data source um, for your Power BI that you might compile into a different report. But what I can say here is the way it works is if I put in a Bing search and want to track information about the hits associated with that. So suppose I'm interested in Trudeau, and this may take a few seconds to add, so I'll add it. Click here. And what this will do is it'll put in a new Bing search as a new dashboard available for me here and give me that same set of analytics. So this is one of many, many different things that you can do, but so we can see that there's a big spike in people binging who Trudeau is over this time. And over the last week, there's been roughly 23,000 hits. It's a little bit lower than it has been. We can see the stratification of languages that have been put together there. We can see where the majority of the pinging is going on. So there's definitely some interest in Europe, Australia, Asia. So it's doing some geo statistics of that data. And I can even go straight to key news releases as they come up or they, as they would be returned on Bing. So you can see how using this data and then compiling that with maybe another set of results, uh, let's say for a different, um, let's say contender, you might get some really interesting uh, information getting compiled at this point and together, right? And we're not very far away from creating a unique set of info. And as a joke, I had a, a Trump one, but I'll leave it alone for now. So, suffice to say, you can use a lot of your existing tools with Power BI, and I encourage you to have to take a look when you, if you do download or do sign up for the online version to see what kind of data can you get. So Google Analytics, if you're using Google Analytics, you want to compile that with a Power BI dashboard, these two play very nice together. So you can get that information and put it together. If you use Click Dimensions, which is a very popular marketing solution for Dynamic CRM, you can get the info from that and stick it right into Dynamic CRM. Um, you know, Azure, if you're using that, it puts together quite well. So there's a number of different things that you can kind of connect here. If you're a developer, you put your stuff on GitHub, et cetera. You get a lot of ways to kind of get little widgets for these tools that analyze the data. And if you want, if you find that you're missing one, it's actually if you're, you don't have to be an incredibly skilled developer to do this, but you can work it out and actually create your own tile here by just getting involved uh, with the, the developers uh, with this tool and it become a content pack you can get. So definitely your ISVs out there would probably have contributed to some of these up there. Of course, um, the last one that we'd want to talk about is that you can put this in Dynamic CRM now. So there's probably three different ways to look at how you would get your data out of Dynamic CRM. Um, suffice to say, when you're in your Dynamic CRM application, you can read a Power BI report and put it together there. With the online version, you can take individual tiles of information and put them as components on your report. So you have the ability to do that. And in addition to that, you can run Power BI from your desktop on any instance, either on-premise or on the cloud, and manage the data from there. So taking all the unique uh, information. And what I like about this a lot is this takes Dynamic CRM, which has a rationalized database, which is 
ta telling you almost in a way the logical model of your data in the first place. So pairing that up with Power BI answers the question of how is your data set up and how to report on it. So I think these two work pretty well together. Uh, and certainly this is another resource that you can look at as to how you would put that together. So the final reason, reason number seven, why you would want to look at Power BI is essentially it's a real replacement for existing uh, BI tools. So a lot of people, this has probably um, been a goal of a lot of BI tools out there for a long time, uh, is to create a really user-friendly interface that doesn't require development that can replace BI tools. And a lot of the time, due to a lot of the reasons we've kind of gone through in the previous parts of this webinar, it's not really been doable or it's fell short of. But if we just take a look at some of the things that are available to you here, remember we can ask a question about the data, so we don't need to know anything about that data, really. You might take a little bit of time to rationalize it a wee bit, make sure you can self-check yourself. You can compile different types of geo data and put that into a place where you can manage it. You can put in three-dimensional graphs measuring three different parameters from all different sources. You can compare the variance between uh, those results as you see fit, and you can put it together in a number of different ways uh, to get that data. And it's doing it all live, right? So, if, well, if you want it to be live, it depends on the sources, of course, that you're getting it from. But if, as we've pointed out in a number of different examples, this data is immediate. It's it's what's available to you now. So this is where this is a key divider between a lot of BI tools out there, right? Usually, you're working with a data warehouse or a catalog or something, and it's generally accepted that you've passed 24 hours, you've passed some time threshold where you can't have the data immediately or with definitely within minutes, right? So this is really breaking that that mold, and it's not, and it does it intelligently. It doesn't necessarily have to read a cube. It can read a cube, but it could read live data, and it doesn't have to be housing or hosting that data. So because it has that ability and has these, let's say, uh, models that'll compile the report on the fly for you. You can either do it that way so you have the most live data, or you can use it from a warehouse if you want to run a little bit faster, right? So you get to pick and fine tune how you're gonna get this information, how you're gonna get it live, and how you're gonna get it in a number of different ways so that you can manage this information. The other thing that's worth noting is you can actually edit data sources. So for data sources that actually go into a database, there are like a lot of what Power BI is built on is Power Query and Power Viewer. So you can put together a lot of the source data and edit it in bulk or massage it in bulk and identify where those gaps are relatively quickly with the tools that are underlying these uh, bigger charts and visualizations. So it gives you a lot of ways to not only look at the data or manage the data, it can give you an implementation methodology that might help clean up your data and identify gaps within it, which would make sense. A tool that can measure things and show you if there's a failure in the measurement. So it definitely gives you a way to do that. So just a wrap up and a set of key points uh, that uh, we want to note from what we've looked at so far. There are a number of reasons to go with Power BI, especially if you think of the context that we're talking about, and that's the Microsoft Stack or Dynamic CRM. So if you've already bought into that, this is a good place to be, uh, and you definitely want to be, um, it, this should be a contender of one of the sources. Of course, we've looked at a number that also work in that environment. So if for whatever reason, you've examined this and doesn't work for you, it's not like you're up a creek, as it were. Power BI provides a quick and intuitive way to analyze data of virtually any solution. As we saw within the demos that we did within this presentation, we can see how creating unique data or unique questions on the fly can give you data and intuitively and help you rationalize data into information. And Power BI addresses the growing demand for big data in real time. So. It's not enough to have big data at some point in time. You need to have it now. And if you want a competitive edge on how you're looking at um, your information, how you're trending your information, and how you're plotting things out, this is probably the turning point for a lot of different uh, tools out there, is to be able to take this live and snippets of that live information and do something with it that's effective. So at this point, 
I'm going to just take a minute or two uh, on mute to read the questions. I'll respond to those, and then after that, I'll open the floor to, uh, uh, let's say, ad hoc questions. So if you would just give me one moment to have a quick review here. So I do have some uh, private questions here asking for uh, reference materials. Uh, I would actually direct you to the Power BI uh, website uh, if you want to have a look. There actually are some some good start. It's a good startup manual. It's a 12 pager. You can get right off the site. Um, that'll kind of get you get you going. There's a good set of videos as well on how to how to set it up. So simply just going to if we go into the browser really briefly here and. I don't even know the website address. I just type in Power BI, and it should be the, one of the first things that comes up for you. So, do, 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 if we click here, this is the site you want to see, and certainly under learning is where you're going to get guided learning documentation. And these are the things I'm talking. So guided learning is going to walk you through different steps. Documentation, should you want to have a manual or something, because that's the way you learn. Um, you definitely want to start here. Uh, and then, of course, uh, after the fact, we are actually providing a three-day Power BI boot camp. So if you really want to get a feeling of how to implement this in different scenarios and in different environments, um, I say, implore you to look forward to uh, our posted course. You should see it within the coming week for sure. Um, but certainly, as a starting point, here's where you'd want to go. Um, so the other question, and I get this a lot, is, uh, you know, will we get a copy of the slides, and will the video of this presentation be made available? We do. Um, we will be making copies of all of our previous webinars, shortened versions uh, of them, available on our, our Google uh, Plus or YouTube uh, page. So look forward to that. If you're looking for the slides individually, feel free. Uh, to reach out to me individually, and we will have a version uh, that we will be distributing to anyone who's attended uh, the webinar for future reference. At this point, I'll open the floor to anyone who does have questions, and uh, you can feel free to free to ask away. So I, I do see another question up here. Where do I get Power BI if my corp corporation does not have it? Well, that website that I went to, there's actually a way to download it right from here. So you can say Power BI. Um, the one that requires the least amount of hassle is doing the one online because it doesn't require you to install something. To get Power BI uh, desktop, you do need to install something on your computer. So if that's a limitation for you, uh, I encourage you, if you have any Dynamics licensing uh, or even um, SharePoint license licensing or, uh, uh, let's say, Excel licensing, Power BI is a tenant of all of those. So you should be able to actually get it um, that's an, an accepted software within your organization relatively easily. Question, what does BI stand for? It stands for business intelligence. And does uh, online Power BI work with on-premise uh, dynamic CRM? Uh, yes, it does. However, you just need, there's, there are some nuances associated with that. The easiest implementation of online Power BI working with on-premise dynamic CRM is when you uh, when you would access that application from let's say the local like so say like uh, from SQL Server. So you, in that case, you'd need to have the same kind of privileges as somebody writing SQL reports. So there's definitely a way to do it, but there's a, a set of security privileges you would need to have set up uh, for that. That would be the short answer. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time. I hope this was uh, edifying. Uh, and you know, look for us on on Twitter. Uh, look for us on Facebook and on LinkedIn. Uh, we'll definitely be putting up uh, more, more continued information uh, and education materials on uh, Power BI and our related information. All right. Thank you very much.